Hello, Paul Robinson from uh, bushcraftcanada.com, uh, workwaycanada.com. Just out again up here in, uh, in uh, early spring, up in the mountains of uh, British Columbia, and um, I just thought I'd do a quick video on um, conifer identification. I had an email from someone saying, could I do a quick video? And I had to think about it, and actually it's quite difficult to do because um, there's so many you know, different varieties of uh, trees, even amongst the, the conifers, and it really depends on your local area as to you know, what you're going to see. So I thought about it for a while and I didn't do it. And then I thought, well, when I first came here, um, you know, looking at all these conifers, I had to learn to identify them too. And the way I did that was to break them down into the, the different varieties of conifers. And then, of course, once you have that, it's much easier then to determine uh, you know, the actual um, tree you're dealing with. So I thought, well, I'll do a quick video on, on and how I did that, and then, you know, if it's of any help to anyone, then uh, that's all good. Um, so, of course, there are lots of different ways of uh, identifying trees. <clears throat> Conifers, of course, when you first look at them, pretty much look all the same with the green needles. Um, but as you get more familiar with them, of course, there's, the, you know, the shape, um, the location, you know, the geography of the land, the climate will tell you a lot about them. Um, you know, the bark, the leaves, uh, seeds, you know, all this information, you know, can help you identify the, um, the particular variety. But one of the easiest way I found to, to begin with was simply to go and look at the, the leaves, uh, needles, uh, as uh, you know, normally know. And looking at the needles actually will instantly tell you, um, it, uh, will instantly help you um, categorize uh, the type of conifer it is. And the way I found it easiest to do that was to split the, the conifers up, um, basically into uh, three different groups. First is the pines. Secondly is the firs, spruces, and hemlocks. And then thirdly are the larches and tamaracks. And actually by quickly looking at the needles, you can very quickly tell which group uh, this tree belongs to. Now if you go up to a tree and um, you, know, you grab the needles, um, Basically what you're looking for is if they're in a bunch. <clears throat> are they singly or, or are they in a group? Uh, if you <clears throat> look at them closely, you'll see that they'll either come off their branch in a, in a single needle, uh, in a small group, or in a big group. Now, if you go up to a tree and you've got a big bunch of needles, 15 up to 40, then you're looking at uh, a larch or a tamarack. Pines and firs just don't have that, so it's an easy way to look at it. Just count them, you know, typically we have a couple of different larches here. The, um, uh, we have the western larch and the subalpine larch, <coughs> and they normally have needles between 15 and 30 and, and sort of 30 and 40. So instantly you can tell by looking at those big bunch of needles, going to be a larch or tamarack. And then, of course, you use your local information books to then find out which, you know, particular uh, variety you're dealing with. If you take them and you look at it and you've got a, uh, needles in, a, in twos, threes or fives, you're looking at a pine. Uh, now again, in this area here, where we are, we're not in the boreal forest, this is a, a subalpine. Um, the pines predominantly are lodgepole pines, which are, have two needles. Lower down we have the ponderosas, uh, which are three, and we also have white pine here. But knowing that pines in two, threes, and fives will tell you that this tree is a pine, and then uh, you can use your local knowledge then to find out you know which variety of pine it is, because obviously there's big variations. Uh, a little bit more complicated now. If you come look at the leaves and you find it's a single needle, if it's a single needle, it's in the, it's in that biggest category of firs, spruces, and hemlocks. And as a rough guide, remember these are just rough guides because this, this is not accurate in every case but overall it's roughly true if you pick one of the needles remember this is a single needle and, and try and roll it in your fingers if it's very difficult if it's flat, if you think F for flat, F for fur there's a good chance that, that actually that's a fur um, and if it's a fur here where we are um, Predominantly, there are um, subalpine firs. We also get the grand fir, 
and the Ambulis fir. Um, we don't get the balsam firs like they do in the boreal forest um, in this particular area. But you know, lo the local knowledge, you know, as soon as you find out it's a fir, you, it's, it's a much easier job then to identify which fir it is. If you can easily roll it in your fingers, um, a single needle, um, the chances are it's a, it's a square section, that it's a spruce. So if you think of an S for square, an S for spruce. Um, and spruces here we have uh, both black and white spruce and uh, Engelmann spruce as well. In fact, white spruce I think is probably the most widely distributed, along with birch, probably the most widely distributed tree in Canada. It goes sort of east west and <coughs> north south. Um, but the spruces typically have a, have a square section of the needle, as you can roll it very easily in the fingers. Uh, if you take one and it's a single needle and you can roll it, and it, and it doesn't roll easily, but it, it can roll in your fingers, that, that's a fair indication that it might be a hemlock. And hemlock section, the cross section, is almost like a triangle. Um, and we have a couple of varieties of hemlock here. We have the uh, mountain hemlock and the um, uh, western hemlock. So knowing, just knowing those those simple facts that A, if it's a single needle, it's going to be a fir, a spruce, um, or a hemlock. And if it's a flat, it'll be a F for flat, F for fir. If it's square, S for square, S for spruce. Or if, it's, if it kind of rolls but doesn't really want to, it's probably a hemlock. Or knowing that if it's in a, you know, twos, threes, or fives, it's going to be a pine. Or if it's in bunches of 15, 30, uh, then it's definitely a larch. Uh, or tamarack. Just knowing that, um, just that little, you know, rule of thumb, helps you to identify which group the tree's in, and then from, once you know the group, you know, it's much easier then to find out which particular tree it is. So anyway, that's how I, you know, uh, started uh, looking at uh, this conifers when I first came here, and it, it was quite a good rule of thumb, and, and you know, after a while you, you're able to identify the trees uh, much better. But to begin with, you know, to, to categorise those trees is quite useful. And, uh, you know, I find it worked quite well. Anyway, I hope that's of uh, some use. Remember, it's just a, just a guideline. It's not true in every case, but it's sort of broadly true. And, um, you know, when you're out uh, up in a bush and you're looking at the trees, you know, if you, that hopefully it might help you categorise the tree and then you can use a book um, um, to find out exactly which tree you're looking at. But it's useful to know the trees because obviously they tell you a lot about the landscape. Uh, they can tell you about the wildlife, a lot of them, you know, particular food for animals at particular times. Um, some have better firewood than others, you know, some have better roots you can use for stitching, um, you know, um, for teas and uh, all kinds of things. So it is useful to know um, which is which. Anyway, I hope that's helped and uh, if you need any more information you can always email me, paul at uh, bushcraftcanada.com.